Welcome to the Sports Car Lessons Podcast. I'm your host, Big Ken. Whether you're watching on YouTube or listening on a streaming service, please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. You'll be notified whenever I drop any new content. Welcome. Thanks for being here. Happy Sunday. I'm doing this early this week. I know a lot of people reached out last week. I told you you were going to get a different part of me late on a Sunday um, a- a- after a weekend of hobbying and shows and football. Uh, I'm, I'm drained. And and I, I knew when I sat down, I knew it was probably going to be low energy. And that's why I warned you. But uh, yeah, I'm definitely, uh, we got the hour change this week, right? Set the clocks back an hour. So I'm up an hour early this morning, and there's other reasons I'm up part of the episode. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But here we go. More energy today. Uh, I want to thank Carmine uh, at Carmine's Cards. Uh, it was on Wednesday's episode for coming on. Uh, it was definitely a great episode. If you missed any part of that, definitely go back and give it a listen. Um, my Chiefs, my Chiefs play Monday night. So it'll be a red zone day today, all day, right? I don't have to, I don't have to worry. I, I love when they play Sunday night or Monday night because I could just focus con- completely on one game. It's tough when they play at like one o'clock or on Sunday or four or four twenty-five, whatever it is. And I want to watch that whole game. And usually it's prime time, right? So then I'm ignoring the other either four or eight games going on uh, at that time. So I like when they play. Uh, those games by themselves. Uh, so Friday, Friday, I went to the GBSCC sports card in memorabilia show, AKA the November Shriners show in Wilmington, Mass. Everybody knows it is the Shriners show, but, uh, I, I need to give it its proper label. Uh, and it was deja vu from a year ago. I did this show, uh, last year. And I also went on Friday, and it just felt like the same trip all over again. Uh, the only difference was this year, I met up with my my, my guy Scott um, at Scott 06614. Uh, the difference was he made the ride with me. At least I had someone to talk cards with uh, on the way up and back. It was an hour and 45 minutes to get there, uh, and three hours, 10 minutes to get home. And that's that's Friday traffic for you, Friday afternoon traffic coming out of uh, out of. Well, you're not in Boston, but it's Boston traffic. Uh, I'll recap that show and my pickups in just a few minutes, but let's jump into today's episode. I don't know if I'm coining a new term here. I, I'm sure it's been used before, but when I woke up this morning, I thought to myself, "I feel like I have a whatnot hangover." a what not hangover. Um, and I'm not sure I'm the only one that's ever felt this way getting up after being on whatnot the night before, uh, or in a whatnot room, you know, chasing spots or being in breaks, uh, since select WNBA came out, I've been jumping, I've been jumping on whatnot. I really, you know, I've done it in the past, but I really haven't done it a lot. Um, trying to buy into to breaks just because the hobby boxes were so expensive uh looking on ebay and watching the prices you know the popular breaking sites the prices were just way too high so i started you know perusing around whatnot and realized there's only a few you know only a few rooms open with this stuff and just sitting in and watching it when it first came out they were super expensive they were like 200 or over $200 a spot on those. So I, I just kind of backed away. I said, sooner or later, it will come down. I mean, at, at that price, I'd be better off just buying a hobby box and taking, instead of taking a chance um, of getting nothing, at least I could, you know, have something for, for my for my $800 or whatever. Um, So this last week, week and a half, uh, I just keep jumping on and watching because I have a lot of viewers that talk to me about, you know, this is where they get a lot of their cards. So when I found some rooms with some reasonable spots, you know, with a with a chance to hit the fever or the sparks, uh, and in my opinion, the two best teams 
right now uh, to hit. And we never know, right? I mean, anyone could emerge if we compared it to like basketball or baseball or football, like we're all chasing somebody up front, but it could be somebody down the road. But I think in, you know, with the WNBA, we kind of know who the, who the stars are. There, there may be, you know, that, that dark horse come from, you know, somewhere else. But I think we kind of know all the players uh, with only, with only the, the you know, the, with the league being so small. So in my opinion, the two best teams to hit, um, in all the ones that I've got into, uh, and I do have to say, because there is a lot of hits in those box in one hobby box, there's a lot of hits in those boxes. Um, I've only been skunked once. I only bought and got into a team, um, or two teams that went through and I didn't get anything out of, um, but for the most part, I've been getting some really nice cards out of there. Um, one of the things I find, and, 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 and I know this is happens with every new release, right? Um, you know, part of the problem is when you hit a card immediately, you know, you're watching the break, but you're looking up the comps on it uh, and you're matching, you know, mentally matching it against your buy-in and you're like, all right, the numbers look good. Like I only bought this spot for this much and this card is worth that much you know you're feeling good you know but right now I, i'm still waiting on shipping from cars from a week ago from last weekend uh still waiting on these packages to arrive and at the time you know you're you're saying i'm in the positive financially right buying into the, the spot this is, you know, this is what the card is worth, but now you're starting to see all these cards hit the market. And, and I've watched, like, it, it's very interesting. I watched a card get hit in a break and I just made a little note of it. And then after that break had ended and there was another, it was a, it was a, like a back to back. And after the second one ended, I go to eBay and I look and I'm like, oh my God, it's the same card. And then I look back, it was the person who won the card. It already listed the card up on eBay. And they were using the picture from the break. Like they took a screenshot and they, they put that card, already had that card up on eBay. Um, so with these cards are flooding the market, obviously the prices are going to come down. And the longer it takes for these packages to arrive, the less, the less I feel I'm in the positive, right? I'm starting to feel like, oh, maybe, maybe I should have waited, you know, a little bit longer or, you know, just, just tried to buy these cards. Now the Caitlin Clark cards are not coming down, right? But it's all the other cards that you hit in the break, you know, that are nice, like the Cameron Brinks or the Angel Reese's or things like that. And the one other thing that's, I, I think is a positive, even though, and I've talked about this before, and I talked about this with Carmine too last week is a lot of these cards are numbered. Right. And I think that's so important that these with these cards being numbered. Now, it's easy to compare against somebody else selling a card and you never know. People are just buying these cards and putting them up there. And sometimes, I mean, they're starting these auctions at ninety nine cents. I mean, I don't know if they really care what they're getting or they're thinking like, look, I'm first to the market. You know, it's going to be. uh You know, I'm going to get the most for the card because I'm I'm first to market with the card and I mean, probably. Probably so, right? Um, so last night I jumped into a room. They had two WNBA hobby boxes left from a full case. No case hit. Had The case hit hadn't been hit yet. Uh, on the first box I jumped into, I came in a little late and I got into three spots and I hit two chasers. Uh, and, and chasers are considered, they, they just figure out who the top, five or six teams are the five teams on most of them. Uh, and instead of, instead of the team name, right, they have, and I'm sure you know this, but I figured I'd just give an explanation in case somebody listening doesn't know. Um, so like the fever and the sparks and the aces and the sky, I mean, they would be considered these, the top chase teams of this break. So instead of, randomly giving you those you randomly get what's called the chase one chase two chase three chase four and then they reveal at the end they have a sealed box they revealed at the end 
who gets, you know, what chase one equals, you know, the fever or the sparks or this or that. So um, I had three, three spots, two chasers. Um, and in this first one, I ended up getting the fever uh, and the sky. So I'm super excited. They open the box. No Caitlin Clark. Now there's only two boxes left, right? No Caitlin Clark, no case hit, but there were three Angel Reese cards that certainly paid for my whole break. They were all, uh, one, one was, uh, was the auto and then two were, were low numbered. So that was perfect. I was extremely happy with that. So now one hobby box left and the room is kind of empty. And I know because he's been saying it all night, no case hit has been hit out of this case. I know people say that a lot. And then at the end, when there's no case hit comes out, they're like, oh, we got Panini or Panini did this to us or that. Right. So I know there's always a chase that there's no case hit in the last box. But I'm feeling positive. It's Saturday night. I'm feeling positive that there's a case hit in this box. So now the room is kind of empty. And it feels it's just like me and another guy bidding on these spots, right? So it just absolutely feels like a steal, you know, getting these spots for $30, $40 each. Um, I end up getting four chasers out of this. Four chasers. Four, four out of the five. <laughs> four out of the five chasers I get. Uh, and a few people hopped into the break. And, I, and I'll tell you, it was just me and another guy that were going through. And I was basically keeping him honest. After I hit two chasers, I was like, I'm fine. But then all of a sudden, I see this, the, you know, it's like $18 and nobody else is bidding in the room. I'm like, I'm not letting this guy get this spot for $18, right? So now, um, you know, I'm, I'm bidding him up to, 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 to push him because I really don't care about it. The, there's a couple other teams I like to get in there that I've gotten other breaks um, the storm and the mystics. I mean, I, I've gotten some great cards, out, out of, you know, from those two teams. Um, and Aaliyah Edwards being, you know, being in Connecticut, she was a Yukon player. There's a lot of people that are, you know, will support her. So if local shows, I know I'll do well with those cards. Um, even I don't mind getting in the, the, the Connecticut sun being here in Connecticut, there's going to be people, you know, that collect those cards up there too. So I think I would do quite well with any of those. So, you know, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I, I'm I'm buying more spots than I really wanted to, but I'm pushing, trying to push the price up to because I just didn't want other people to get in so cheap, right? Um, at the end of the break, more people started to jump in, uh, and it was probably bad luck for the guy for the host that was doing it because. I think what what I was afraid that was going to happen was, and he kept saying, well, if, if they go this cheap, we're going to have to put a minimum on there, you know, start it at a minimum bid and not starting the bids at a dollar. And this happened to me, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Th this happened to me the other night, and then I end up waiting around the, over an hour because they, he just kept running the same thing instead of doing it. Well, I'll talk, I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute. But anyways, I didn't want this to turn into like this long drawn out thing. It's like 1130, quarter to 12 at night now. And I'm like, I just want to get through this last box. I want to see what's in it. Um, so I just kept bidding it up. So lucky for him, late in the break, like he, there was one chaser left. I had all the other, there was one chaser left. And, uh, with the, all the uh, four or five people jumped into this room late, he said, look, there's one chaser left. I'm, I'm going to throw it out there. And there was, uh, you know, the, there was the chaser. And I think the teams that uh, aren't teams anymore, teams that end up changing names. So they were older players like Lisa Leslie, things like that. You know, play, players from, uh, you know, the, the players on teams that te the teams aren't there anymore. They were early teams that aren't there anymore. Anyways. Um, so he said, this is it last one, just bid it up. So, you know, granted that spot went for like 165 bucks, which still isn't bad. I guess if you're guaranteed a chaser, you could hit 
you know, the fever or the sky or, you know, the sparks like that. But the person who won it and it pops up on the screen was a first time purchase. And he said in the chat, I just, I just won the giveaway. So I felt obligated to buy a spot, but he kept asking, what was the giveaway? What did I win? Like he had no idea, no idea what he won. I don't know if it was, you know, I don't know who it was. Kid could have been a kid, could have been a doll. I don't know. I have no idea. I have no idea. But anyway, he kept asking. He's like, look, it was a couple packs, right? And, and we know the, the giveaways are usually like dollar packs. Uh, so at this point, you probably know what's coming, the way I'm telling the story. Um, the random last person who got the chaser, the first time buyer, gets the fever spot. I have all the other spots. Now, before I reveal what they pulled out of the box, I will say I felt pretty good about all the hits I got out of the box. And I ended up with both autos as well. Uh, great numbered cards. I felt like it was a Cameron Brink box. Lots of great color, lots of low numbers. So I was excited. I, I would have been complete, I was completely happy with, with what came out. The last card, you guessed it, is the case hit. Caitlin Clark Color Blast. A Caitlin Clark Color Blast. So, of course, I'm thinking, what bad luck to me, right? From the host choosing what box we was going to rip first and which one he was going to rip second. And to have all those chasers except for the one that ends up being the fever. But then I thought to myself, what good luck to this person, right? First time purchase. Didn't even know what he hit. He asked in the chat, is that a good card? It almost reminded me. It almost reminded me of when I jumped back into the hobby and I jumped into the break and I hit the Patrick Mahomes on card auto. But of course, the, it was a redemption. It wasn't the card. But it was like once, you know, it was, it was like, to me, it was like the universe going out and grabbing this person and saying, you're, you're, you're going to be part of the hobby now. You're probably going to make lots of bad decisions and probably have lots of whatnot hangovers getting up, saying, why did I spend all that money on whatever? Right. But good for you. I, I mean, I, I, I'm glad it happened. Right. And I'm glad I was there to watch it happen. Um, but holy cow. And of course, I did have to try to look up comps on that card. And I saw there was one public sale on eBay. It was listed at $19,999. Um, not sure what it sold for, but that price feels pretty cheap to me uh, for a Caitlin Clark Color Blast. Um, not bad for a $165 spot buy-in. I wish it was me. If it was meant to be, it would have been, and it wasn't. So good for him. Uh, so getting back on, getting back on topic, waking up this morning, thinking to myself, oh man, how many spots did I buy last night? Was it worth it? Do I have to start calculating? I mean, at the moment I felt like I did really well with the Cameron Brink stuff, right? Um, what was the resale of the values? I got, I I'm like, I'm trying to think, I'm trying to go back again. And I'm like, okay, look, slow down, <laughs> it's like, you know, let it go. Um, and if you've been on whatnot. You know, you know the pressure it is when you're watching, you know, the on the bidding on that. And it, it and it's really whoever designed it designed it well. It's like, ah, just doesn't see it. Just like I should could just throw one more bid on there. Oh, maybe just one more bid on there, right? <laughs> and this is what happened to me during the week, too. Um you throw that one more bid on, and then you're like, Oh no, I hope somebody else bids. I really don't want this now. And then you get it and you're like, okay, I'll take it. And then it ends up being most of the time it ends up being okay. Sometimes it doesn't, right? But I don't know. It's just a it, it's a it's a strain. It, I I don't know how to describe it. And I don't know if it's like that for everybody or just certain people that get on there. Um that you just feel compelled to just be part of everything that's going on. 
And especially last night, I was just like, I'm not letting this guy get a, get a spot for two. Not when I'm paying thirty or thirty five dollars, I'm not letting him get a spot for, for. So I I I was, and it wasn't the guy who won the Caitlin Clark. It was another guy who ended up getting nothing. He had like I had half, he had half. This other guy had one spot. It was just it was crazy that this other guy. And he, you know, I, I know I know he was upset because I was reading some of this stuff in the chat. Uh, They were great deals, great deals on those spots. Cause I had been, I had been doing this during the week and I had been just completely getting outbid. Like I'd sit down and I would jump on and be like, Oh, we're selling, you know, this many spots. And I'd be like, okay. And I'd get in and all of a sudden I'd see them go up to 80, 85, 90. I'm like, Oh my God, I'm not, there's no way, there's no way that I'm paying that for a spot. Because, you know, there are some good teams in there and there's a lot, lots of good cards in there, but you really have to do well. We, and we know, and I said it earlier, you have to hit, if, you, if you're spending that kind of money, you have to hit a Caitlin Clark card. I mean, you really do. There's not a lot of other cards in there that equal the price of that. But if you can get into spots at 30 or 35 or $40 like I did, I think that, that's a home run, right? I mean, it, to me, it's, it, it, it is well worth it. If you if you can get an auto or you get a low number card, you should be able to get that money back. I started thinking. I started thinking that to myself when I'm looking at this whatnot, that the design is for the host to win, whoever's hosting, whoever's. The, in the room it's it's their design it's like a breaker right like i i look at them like a breaker like when a breaker is putting up a break they're figuring out the prices and it's designed for them to make money on this and they, they're not doing it for free so it's the, the the design here in my mind right i'm immediately to think that the design is for the host to win i mean that's the design isn't it for the host to win for the host to be the winner. He or she making the money on it. But I was in a room this week where the host was expecting to sell 13 spots in a WNBA break for $150 a spot. And the first four spots sold in the 30s. And, and I could tell the host was getting mad. Two more spots sold just under $50, I think $47, $48. Um, and now there's seven spots left and, and I don't remember, I think there may have been three chasers or four chasers left. I think a couple of chasers went back to back at like 30 or $40. So now he says, I'm putting the minimum, I'm starting the bidding at 149 and nobody, nobody would bid. We sat there for 35 minutes, uh, and people, other people he was chatting with in the room saying, oh, I want to buy a personal of this, a personal of that. He's like, okay, as soon as we're done here, we'll run the personals. Um, waiting and waiting and waiting and just kept putting 149, 149, 20 seconds, 20 seconds, 20, nobody getting it. Then he stopped for a while. He got up and walked away and he came back like, five or eight minutes later said, we're going to start again at 149. Nobody, nobody anymore. I think maybe one spot sold, uh, but that was it. Um, so then he was like, I'm just dropping everything to a dollar. You know, I don't, I don't care. Just, just run it. I, he was, he was mad. He was melting down. Uh, my calculations you probably got about $600 or maybe a few under for that WNBA box. You know, and I don't know what he paid for it. He still may be making money on that. I and mean, they maybe he was just mad he wasn't making more money than he thought he was gonna make. Um he opened the packs like disgruntledly. Gee, he was just disgruntled, hardly showing any of the hits. He pulls a Caitlin Clark auto, he flashes it to the screen, he puts he doesn't even say anything. He puts it in the thing, he puts it down, and somebody's like, Hey, is that card numbered? He goes, Oh, I'll check in a minute. 
you know, and somebody's like, oh, it was that Caitlin Clark? And then he picks the card up, he whatever. I don't even know if it was numbered or not. But then he decided he's going to put it on the back and put it on the stand in the back where most breakers would have been screaming, yelling, you know, woo, woo, horns going off, sirens, putting that thing up. He was he just tossed it to the side like it was, uh, you know, like it was just a, a stupid, you know, base card worth nothing. Um Is it okay for them to lose? I mean, there's there's a ton of risk in breaks for us buying into the breaks, but what happens when the risks are for the breaker? Because this is the first time I ever witnessed a breaker losing in a break or felt like they were losing or them acting like they were losing in a break, right? Um, I've never seen anything like it. The way I saw this guy acted, I never saw anything like it. But doesn't he realize that this happens to a good percentage of his participants every night or every day they're doing this? I mean, there's a number of people that jump into these and don't get anything. Um, and then they'll say right away, I mean, I, I mean, I, I would have to say from their standpoint, they're like, hey. Oh, sorry about that, man. There's a risk. You're, you know, got to know you're taking a risk, high risk, high reward, stuff like that. But I, I, it's the first time I, I, I don't know. I had to talk about it and throw it out there, but I was just still surprised that the first time I saw a breaker lose and actually just kind of throw a tantrum in, 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 in the stream. Did he go home thinking to himself the next morning? Did he have a what not hangover? Damn, I lost money last night. <laughs> yeah, not as many times as the people participating in his breaks, I'm sure. Uh, and I have a lot of listeners who send me pictures of cars they hit breaks. I mean, just great cars they hit on whatnot a lot. And uh, I always think to myself, I wonder what that costs. I wonder what the actual costs are. Somebody sent me this great Caitlin Clark card they hit. And they said, I hit it in this room on whatnot. I went to that person's room on whatnot. And I was watching. They were selling single packs going for $200. I mean, there's 13 packs in there. I mean, that 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 guy in that room was, that host in that room was doing okay, right? But if you could hit the Caitlin at $200 pack, beauty, right? But if you're missing... If you're swinging and missing, that's that's a lot of money down the drain. And there's not not many of us that are as lucky as this guy was last night on a first 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 time purchase hitting that color blast, Caitlin Clark, like a Grail card, right? I I noticed too the WNBA rooms on whatnot um, when that first dropped, there were four rooms going. Um, and I think most people are running out of their product now. Um, last night, Saturday night, there was only one stream going. And and like I said, I was in it. And there were people in there. Just nobody was even in there bidding on it. Uh, so I think it's pretty much drying up now. It's going to dry up quickly. But then it's right on to the next one, right? Um, this, this is going to be a test for me because this is my first time doing this. And and I did this more, two things. More was, you know, personal and business. Personal because I wanted to be part of the breaks. I wanted to watch the breaks and I wanted to get some of the cards out of there. On the business end, everything I don't want, you know, uh, sales-wise. So we're going to see how well it, it pans out buying these cards like that and then bringing them to the shows or wherever I am selling, putting them up for sale and see how well they do. Um, and I think as long as, I, we have a good enough time before the prism comes out. I should be able to, you know, move those cards. Hopefully by the time they get here though, right? The prices won't be, the market won't be so flooded that the prices will be, <laughs> that I'll be uh, going in the wrong direction and just be able to carry, you know, we'll see. We'll see. It's all, it's all, it's all a hobby, right? <laughs> um,
Tell me what you think. Do you participate in whatnot? Do you wake up with a whatnot hangover the next day wondering if you did well, if you made a mistake, if you made money? You know, what happens when you strike out? Have you missed out on a card like me, a 50-50 chance? And the guy opened the wrong box in the wrong order. And I'm new to whatnot, right? Are there hosts that usually, do the hosts usually win? Are they the winners all the time? Or do they get beat up just as much as we do? Have you seen this happen? Do you, have you seen these meltdowns of a host who's losing money but knows they have to still have to run the break? Uh, drop a comment. Let me know what you think. So the Shriner Show on Friday. Met up with my guy Scott Friday morning. Took the drive up to Wilmington, Mass. We got there at 12. Uh, right when the show opened, roughly 250 people or so in line to buy tickets. Tons of vintage at this show. And that's really what this show is known for. I remember being there last year and thinking the same thing. Uh, but I did want to get there early. I love to avoid the crowds. Um, if there were going to be crowds, right. And, and definitely try to get some, uh, some, some Friday deals and steals, right. Um, one thing, one of the things that was very obvious at this show from the minute I walked in that the cards were overpriced and I can't speak for vintage because I don't know what those prices should be. And I'm not looking them up. Uh, but a number of people I talked to in the room were saying things like 150% of comps, um, way over comps. I can't believe the prices. Uh, I know personally, I found uh, a couple of Mahomes rookie cards. I found some Brady rookie cards, uh, and they were definitely way overpriced. I mean, there was a, a, a couple sales on a Mahomes rookie card that was in the $3,000 range and it was stickered at $8,500. Uh, so definitely overpriced. And people may not want to sell them either. I understand that. I completely understand that. And it may be a card that the, the dealer can't let that go for anything less or just wants to put it in his case and say, yeah, I'm just I'm just firm on it for whatever the reason. I mean, I understand that too. Uh, I was trying to negotiate with a dealer over a 2000 Bowman uh, Brady Chrome PSA 8. And the last couple sales on that around uh, $1,000, $1,100. The dealer had it at $1,600. And it was probably the closest that I found price-wise to, to an actual comp, you know, looking at cards. Uh, so, I, you know, I said, hey, you have any room on that? And he said, Man, make me an offer. So I was that guy on the other side of the table with my phone out saying, hey, the last sale was, he cut me right off immediately. He said, I can't be close to that sale. I just can't. Um, I said, well, last sale was 1100 Where could you be? He said, 1500 That would be my minimum. And just as he said that, a guy tapped me on the shoulder. I look over as this guy that I know. I've met at shows. I've seen at shows. I've done deals with at shows. Um, and I've done, usually get really good deals from him. And he said, Hey, I got a Brady 2000 Bowman Brady rookie. I'll sell you. It's not a Chrome, but it's a PSA eight. Uh, so we walked off to the side, looked at the card. Uh, I quickly made the deal. Uh, and if you're on YouTube, I'm holding it up. It's a 2000 Bowman Brady rookie PSA eight quick and easy deal. The guy's name is Vince. Appreciate the deal, Vince. Um, and I walked the room. I mean, I went every table I walked the room. And really, besides goats right now, the only other thing I'm buying at shows, you know, are women's college basketball, just preparing for this season and and hope to uh hope there'll be as much excitement with these players coming up as there was last year with that last year's draft class. Um so I was able to uh, pick up uh, Paige Becker's uh, Bowman U, March Madness, Red. This is numbered 7 of 10, holding this up. And it is graded PSA 9. 
Uh, it is a pop one. Obviously, there's only 10 of these cards. Um, the dealer, the dealer that had this card also had her uh super fractor 101, the equivalent to the Caitlin Clark one that sold for like $78,000. He had this and that one in his case. Um, and both cards are like a, uh, complete ends of the spectrum, right? And both cards are like pop ones, right? There's no nobody else has those cards right or, or with this one so he had no idea on the price and uh i thought i made a great deal on this card that i bought from him number to 10 um you know time will tell but uh i when he told me the price i almost felt bad negotiating and he accepted a lower offer um so i i, I was happy i was happy to buy the car well we'll we'll, we'll see where that goes <laughs> Uh, I did find one dealer there selling uh, raw women's college basketball cards. And I'll refer to this find using a phrase I've heard around the hobby is a honey hole. <laughs> uh, I walked up and I looked into the case and I just saw a couple cards. I saw this Michaela Williams uh, auto, uh, purple refractor auto, and this uh, Hannah Hidalgo. Yellow, number to 75. Incredibly cheap. I just, I was amazed how cheap those two cards were. And I was like, okay, let me see what else you got here. And pull those two out. And he says, oh, I got cards in the box over there. So I, oh, you know, start pawing through his, his discount box. And uh, I start finding... Uh, couple kiki rice autos hold those up juju watkins base cards hannah hidago pace base cards kiki rice base cards and i mean just just tons of these things and i, I and i'm just gonna flash these on the screen i mean just just absolutely almost the whole box worth worth of these things that i was so excited to get probably uh, in total. I haven't really counted them. I probably should have in total. I probably got 40 or 50 cards here. Um, and the asking price was 50 cents a card. <laughs> uh, 50 cents a card. I have trouble buying these cards on, on eBay. I'm always looking for, for a lot of these base cards, trying to buy them in bulk, but people are selling them singly at, you know, three, four or five dollars each and 50 cents a card. I mean, it was it was a home run. It was it was the honey hole. I found the honey hole. Uh, so it was definitely a successful trip for me. Uh, I haven't gone through those cards yet, but I'm sure a good number of them will be on my in my order to uh, to PSA, my next PSA order. Um, it was definitely great to uh, see and hang out with a number of people up there. A shout out to my guy, Joe at premier sports ri uh he had a, a booth up there and uh he gave me some refuge he gave me a spot in his booth just to come sit back and relax for a little bit you know walking the show got to hang out with him for a little while so it was it was great catching up with him uh al always great to see him and really everybody else that i saw and talked to up there uh i i made it a quick show i we were there at 12 uh, out there at th out at three o'clock sharp, hoping I would beat the traffic home on a Friday night, but the ride home is just horrible traffic, but it's always a little better, right? When you find some great deals and you're excited to go home and you're riding with somebody and they, uh, you know, you can chat the hobby the whole way home. So it, 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 even though it was a long ride, it was okay. Um, as far as the show itself, I really can't comment on the foot traffic and the sales. I chose to go Friday before the crowds. I chose to leave Friday before the crowds where I would have expected would have showed up. Uh, I did reach out to a few people to give me their honest feedback of the show. Unfortunately, I'm recording this early uh, in the middle of what I'm referring to as my whatnot hangover <laughs> on a Sunday morning. Uh, so I haven't heard back from anybody yet. Um, but from what I could see on Friday, not a lot of deals happening. 
and, and like I said earlier, people complaining about the prices being so high. And and uh, that could change too. I mean, I know people show up at these three-day shows and they start high and maybe by Saturday or Sunday morning, they're like, mm, I better get my, my prices down. So if you were there on Saturday or Sunday, drop some comments. Let me know what you thought, what the crowds were like, were the prices still high? Did you get any steals? Um, I did have a PSA order come back this week. I'll share just a couple of the hits with you. Um, not hits, but the, the cards. Um, some of these I talked about. I bought these at other shows. I sent out the grading. Um, I had the Paige Becker's Prospects Auto Refractor. PS came back a nine. I knew that card would come back a nine as well as this one. This is the Purple Mini uh, Diamond Refractor. So this 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 uh, purple one, this Juju uh, Watkins, this purple one, uh, that's numbered to three ninety nine. Oh, and the page is numbered to two fifty. That auto is numbered to two fifty. Uh, this came in a SGC nine point five that I had cracked out, and when I when I after I'd gotten it out of the SGC case, um, I had high hopes that it could be a ten but it ended up coming back in nine. So some of the other cards that I sent, these were all from the, um, from the, the uh, Panini instant, the WNBA draft night, um, a bunch of uh, JC Sheldon uh, PSA tens. So I bought a bunch of these cards, the angel Reese. This was like a second order that I had uh, angel Reese, 10 angel Reese, 10, um, Caitlin Clark. So the, these, oh, this was another uh, JC Sheldon. This was a 10. Caitlin Clark. So these I already sent in um, and they came back nines. And I really inspected them. These cards looked perfect. Uh, so I cracked them and I resent them and they came back nines again. So that was a, that was not a win on those sending them back. I thought one of them. One of the two would come back at 10, and they didn't. Uh, some Hendon Hooker, uh, black and white checkerboard, came back at 10. And Hendon Hooker, rookie gridiron, King's Auto, also came back at 10. This was one of the uh, redemptions that I've sent a couple of those redemption uh, cards off. They've gotten the cards, and I've sent the cards off for grading. So this, this was part of this order, and I have a few more out there. I mean, I'm hoping maybe he might get a shot and uh, I'll be able to move some of those cards. Uh, and finally, uh, a big shout out to Bill and Billy Sports Cards. They opened their brand new LCS this weekend in Newtown, Connecticut. I wish them luck. Lots of years of, of success. And, and if you're in that area, stop in, check the store out, say hello. I think right now they're open seven days a week. Uh, so. Any day you're around, I would I, I would stop in and check them out. I will be back Wednesday with a brand new episode. I want to thank everyone for tuning in. And if you like what you hear, please like, definitely subscribe. And most importantly, tell a friend and spread the word. Until next time, take care of yourselves and everyone around you.